the human beings. How are you guys? <laughs> We're doing good. How about yourself? That was a pretty impressive work tonight. Thank you. I'm doing wonderful. I'm, uh, I've been on cloud nine since I got here. You know, there's, there's just so much, so much animosity and so much anger and hate going on in the world that I just wanted to offer some sort of reprieve for, you know, 15 minutes, but take 22 seconds. <laughs> talk about the journey to get here. I mean, there were so many like delays along the way after your first fight to get here. Can you talk about just, I guess, mentally what it's been like from your, from your first fight to here? Oh, Lord. Um, you know, I just try to be a, a, a ray of sunshine. So, uh, I always have a, a positive mentality. So when my first fight fell through, I just ate a bunch of chicken wings and I'm like, all right, let's get ready for the next one. And then my next fight fell through. And I was like, all right, you know what? Let's, let's go run a marathon and then we'll, we'll get ready for the next one. And then my next fight fell through. And I was like, all right, well, let's do a strength training competition and <laughs> get ready for the next one. I just, um, I just try to keep going and I try to better myself. So. That's it. That's all we can do, right? Yeah. Well, it turned out great for you. I mean, did you envision an opportunity to go in there and get done in, in less than a minute? As you said, you were ready for 15, but did you ever play out a scenario where you'd have a quick finish like that? No, sir. I've never played out a quick finish for myself. I, I wanted a quick finish, but I prepare for a marathon. I, I prepare to go, and um, that's just the type of fighter and athlete that I am, that I have to be well-rounded and I have to prepare for everything. So, uh, no, I was not ready for it, but I heard my corner go for the kill. Prison rules. So uh, <laughs> I went for it. It did seem like she caught you very early on. I mean, was that what triggered the aggression or what, I mean, what did that you, you know, came out with that flurry like that? What was it? Um, I, so she came in, there was a, a little, a, a little tap and uh, one, she wanted to go in for the takedown and uh, <laughs> that's not a smart idea. Not, especially when I'm, I am a very cerebral and strategic fighter and I've put myself in countless positions and I just, I knew what to do there because I've been there. Um, and as soon as I felt my power go through, my husband actually has been correcting me. He's like, Throw, follow through with your cross, follow through with your cross. And you know, I was emaciated so I couldn't, but uh, today I did and I, I told him, I, I said I followed through so we're good. <laughs> Last thing for me, where do you see yourself going from here? Because a lot of people view you as a, you know, a top prospect, but you're still early in your career as well. So, I mean, how do you see your career developing this? Do you want to be an immediate contender, or, or, or where do you go? Uh, it is very early in my career. I, um, I'm only 8-1 and one now. I, I only have nine professional fights under my belt. So um, I have a lot of growing to do. I have a lot of learning to do. And... I want to earn my stripes to get that title fight and I, I don't want to go and ask for a title shot immediately. I want to beat the right people, I want to grow as an athlete and once I do and earn that title, I want to keep it. So <laughs> yeah, I, uh, my goal for the end of this year is to get a couple more fights and earn that title shot by the end of 2020 or if not uh, the start of 2021. COVID definitely put a hamper on that um, that goal for this year, so I had to adjust that. Julia, right here. After your fight, you let you let out a, a big yell, and you were you, you let a lot of emotions came out. Was that just a release of the last like 10, 11 months of everything kind of being in turmoil? Yes, sir. Um, like I said, I I came into this fight with such a heavy heart, with so much that's going on, um, and it's just a scream for the people, a scream for Panda Nation, just let it out and sometimes that's what we need to do and I I had that opportunity so I just did it for us. Is it back to sewing masks after this fight? <laughs> yes sir if anyone needs it I you know I'm 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 here to serve I'm I'm just like everyone else and I just want to help so if anyone needs a mask I got a whole bunch of them. Julia can I ask, the first time you came to Vegas, it was during the earthquake and everything last year, this time COVID. Can you just talk about emotionally what it's like to be the one to have both of those experiences for your two UFC fights? Oh, Lord. Um, it's, it's a lot. There's, and like I said, there's always something going on. But like, like I said, I've always just been trying to be just a ray of sunshine and just happy for someone. And last time when there was the earthquakes, I, give I gave tips on how to be safe 
around everything that was going on. And with COVID, I'm saying, you know, stay clean, but fight filthy. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to promote and be a good role model and um, just do good by everyone. After all the adjustments were just emotionally, what was it like to not fight Carol after preparing for her twice and everything? Four times. That was four times. Four times with Carol. It's fine. It's none of her fault. I do not hold it against her, but I'm over it. <laughs> if we see each other in the future, then blessed, I will do it. But gosh, I just, I feel like it's cursed at this point. Worse than Tony Habib? I mean, it's like, it's not as high caliber, caliber but I think it's like comparable. <laughs> Gotcha. Final question for me. Yes, um, obviously, two wins. This one, the biggest now with that finish. Can you just talk about being a fighter, local circuit, smaller level, to now, hey, the UFC spotlight and getting all of that attention that you maybe didn't before? So here's the thing. My first fight was against Marion Renault. She's number 10. So yeah, it may have been smaller circuit, but she's still a badass, and I still beat her. Nico Montano. It was a small circuit, but she was the f inaugural flyweight champion. So yes, maybe I fought smaller circuits, but I have not fought hard, like easy people. So y people can say like, oh, you know, she came up, she has easy wins. I, I don't have easy wins. I fought hard, tried and true people, and I don't take easy fights. And I think that my performance shows that. Uh, speaking of coming up, as you had your earlier career, you mentioned the Renault fight, but after that, I think you took like a three or four year hiatus in between yes, and then came back. What was it that happened in between that period of time? That wonderful little man over there with that mask. Uh, uh, hi, man. He, um, we moved from California to Oklahoma and I needed to find the right home for me for training. And so long and short of it was life happened and I needed to reassess and find what fits for our training goals because we have different goals. So yeah, I just put my family first. And when it came to deciding like to do MMA because you went to Notre Dame and then you have the geology career that you have as well on top of it. So what was it that made you settle and decide on MMA that you were gonna go full steam at it? <laughs> so it wasn't necessarily MMA because I still train in a variety of things. Like I can go run a marathon if I wanted to and I'm competitive, you know, I run, I run a 321. Like I can do well. Um, I strength train and I'm pretty freaking good. Like I'm 135 pounds and I squat over 300 pounds. Like I can do a lot of things and right now this is just my focus. In the future it's gonna change. When I have a child, you know, I might start running again or something and just throw them on on my back. But it just, uh, this is what suits us right now and this is what we're working towards.